Uh, if confirmed, Mr. Thompson would serve during an important time in U.S.-Nepalese relationship uh, relations. Nepal is one of the few countries in the region to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Earlier this year, the Nepalese parliament approved a $500 million infrastructure grant from the Millennium Challenge Corporation, a decision met with protests from citizens who were concerned about American influence in their country. And just last month, the Nepalese government canceled its participation in the U.S. state partnership program. These actions followed a concerted Chinese government disinformation campaign. It is vital that the U.S. ambassador to Nepal be able to navigate this landscape and reassure the people of Nepal that America is their ally. Mr. Thompson's depth of experience in this region make, makes him well qualified to take on this important post. Ranking Member Romney and honorable members of this committee, I appreciate very much you considering my nomination to serve as the next U.S. ambassador to Nepal. We're at an important juncture in our relationship with Nepal. Nepal has been referred to as a yam between two stones, those stones, of course, being India and China. While those countries do have important relationships with Nepal, we also share Nepal's interest in strengthening its sovereignty and partnership with the United States. If confirmed, facilitating Nepal's economic growth and strengthening the trade ties between our countries will be key priorities. The United States relationship with Nepal has seen recent gains that cement our 75-year partnership. Mr. Chairman, you mentioned Nepal's parliament ratified the $500 million Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact in the face of a torrid PRC disinformation campaign. This project will build electricity transmission lines to connect to Nepal's clean energy, abundant hydropower with South Asia's energy grid. It will also build high quality roads in Nepal. These projects will increase the prosperity of both of our countries. USAID has just signed a $659 million agreement with Nepal to contribute to Nepal's development over the next five years. This is a new chapter in the United States government's longstanding development relationship and reflects the evolution of our partnership. Post-earthquake reconstruction is winding down. The transition to federalism is well underway, and through successful programming, the United States has helped lay the foundation to support Nepal's goal of graduating to middle-income country status. If confirmed, I will also push for the rights of all Nepali citizens and residents. This includes Dalits, marginalized communities, and refugee communities, including Tibetan refugees. I will encourage the government of Nepal to implement policies that promote meaningful inclusion, economic opportunity, and humanitarian support. Nepal's progress on the commitments it made during President Biden's Summit for Democracy demonstrates how important Nepal's young democracy is to its people and the importance it places on its relationship to the United States. Nepal's support for Ukraine resolutions at the UN General Assembly and the UN Human Rights Council demonstrates its dedication to the international rules-based order and the premise of territorial integrity. Nepal is a committed bilateral partner and a committed partner on the world stage. Finally, if confirmed, I will also work to help Nepal strengthen its democratic institutions. Nepal has come a long way since its civil war only 16 years ago. Like other democracies, Nepal's politics can be contentious and messy at times, but supporting Nepal's democracy is in our interest and will remain a priority of mine if confirmed as ambassador. Mr. Chairman, I would like to close by saying that we have an important opportunity to strengthen the U.S. relationship with Nepal. I look forward to working with Congress to build this relationship. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thompson, I really want to focus on you because I uh, just recently came back from uh, Nepal, uh, as I think you know, and it was uh, an extraordinary eye-opening trip. It was sort of one of the last countries we tagged on to a longer CODEL, but when I got there, I found myself thanking uh, God that I, I was able to visit the country because I learned so, so much. And this small nation uh, uh, set between two titans, uh, India and China, has had this difficult balancing act for a very, very long time. And maybe I want to start with China um, and their extraordinary influence in the nation. You have a country that in the last year or so accounts for about 78% of all the investment in Nepal. But at the same time, as we talk with government officials, they really want to deepen their relationship with us. You know the economic uh, agreement that we just uh, got signed, literally with China trying to put disinformation and try to undermine our ability to deepen these economic ties. A new prime minister there seems to be really committed uh, to an independent relationship with America.
but not seen like we're just trying to exploit that relationship to counter China. They want to uh, be understood as someone that has uh, to stand on their own. And I'm wondering if you can give me just a, a brief view of how you take your mission and how to strengthen our relationship as China continues to try to expand its influence and, frankly, the, uh, undermine the autonomy of the country. Thank you, Senator. It was a great privilege to uh, brief you and the other members of the CODEL that, that traveled. We really appreciate the fact that you were able to tag Nepal on and, and have such a good experience. Uh, I know the embassy there reported back very uh, favorably about all the discussions that you had. You're absolutely right. This is a critical issue for Nepal as they balance their interests. Uh, I had mentioned in my opening statement, uh, you talked about two titans. They often are referred to as a yam between two boulders. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as, as Prime Minister Duba seeks to develop the economy, to, to find a path forward for Nepal that represents the real interests of the Nepal people, uh, this, can, this can be a challenging neighborhood in which to do it. You're absolutely right. The Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact provides uh, a huge game-changing opportunity for them to have greater connectivity uh, with the um, electricity grid in South Asia, to build better transportation networks to allow them to expand their trade opportunities as a nation. We're also looking at other opportunities, uh, Senator, such as through the um, uh, Development Finance Corporation and our USAID mission to help develop market-oriented opportunities uh, with entrepreneurs, uh, with greater business and investment climate. And so if confirmed, I would look forward uh, to really engaging uh, very deeply in these in these fronts because we, we, we are at a at a critical juncture for uh, this type of opportunity. Well, I, I hope you see me and I, I imagine a lot of the other members of that CODEL as allies in this. I think we all, I, I don't, I'm not overstating this, I think we all fell in love with Nepal and its people and it was an extraordinary experience. And on that note, let me make the last point to you. Um, I had never seen the Himalayas before hmm. uh, and as we flew by them, uh, I saw people on the plane with me looking out at this incredible mountain range with tears in their eyes, getting very emotional at the majesty of the mountains. Um, but we also were coming off of understanding that Nepal is one of the top five countries on the planet right now that are suffering the effects of climate change. And I was, I was stunned at how devastating uh, the, the growing warmth is uh, doing to that country and really threatening. I mean, 20% of the water that humanity gets is coming from the Himalayas. And right now, climate change is causing havoc and threatens uh, extraordinary destruction, not to mention deprivation. So this I see as an urgency. I knew it intellectually, but to experience it on the ground, to talk to people who are trying to think of creative ways to deal with this. And so I'm hoping that you see that as part of your mission as well, and to help us as uh, uh, policymakers and lawmakers try to find ways to help especially these very vulnerable nations who are feeling from island nations to um, many uh, uh, in the mountains who are going to feel the devastating effects of this, which will have economic, uh, uh, which will not only cause economic damage, but it will cause political instability as well. Look forward to working with, uh, with uh, the committee, with our, our colleagues at the department on this front. You're absolutely right. Critically important. Uh, Nepal made some very ambitious pledges at the COP26. We will continue through our assistance programs to seek ways to help them adapt and mitigate climate change. High priority for us, absolutely, if confirmed. And again, thank you for your kindness to me uh, before that incredible trip. Thank you.